Sister Hinton to come up and give an introduction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Introduction for anointed poet, anointed poets, power, empowered to nutri souls, pens. The Ebenezer AME Church Poetry Ministry, whose members are known as the Anointed Pens, Poet Powers to Nutri Souls, was established in 2003. Since then, the anointed pens have ministered at Ebenezer, Ebenezer and throughout the community, presenting poetry, hosting poetry workshops, poetry and praise service, and opening mic events. Services and celebrations are presented at area churches, nursing homes, shelters, schools, juvenile and community centers throughout the region. The anointed pens are currently under the leadership of President J. Joy Matthews, Alfred, a.k.a. Sister Joy, who is the Prince George's County Poet Lit Lit Laureate. 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 Thank you. <laughs> to question why poetry, the response is given. We share a love, of, a love for God, which we share through convicted hearts receptive ears and a spirit that leads us to write poetry. Good afternoon. My name is Sister Joy. I'm the president of the Ebenezer Amy Church Poetry Ministry. We are excited to be here. We have already been blessed. Amen. And uh, we are, today we are four members of the ministry uh, that actually totals about 25. Uh, we are blessed to be able to come into the presence of an experience supporting refugees, connecting with persons around the globe, in a way that shows us there are things that even we can do that had not been brought to our attention. I'm going to speak to you in follow-up before I leave today. I'd like to uh, bring greetings on behalf of our pastors, Reverend Dr. Granger Browning and Reverend Dr. Joanne Browning of Ebenezer AME Church. We are very honored to be able to share this moment of praise through poetry. Our ministry is now, six, uh, let's see, what is it, 16 years, I think it is, that we've been ministering in the uh, church and in the community, mm -hmm. and this is uh, such an occasion that we hope that we leave you feeling fed through the word. Amen. Now, today we are going to present individual poems and a group presentation. Amen. Our first presenter will be Sister Beverly Taylor. As she comes, please show her some love. We all need her. Amen. I've enjoyed myself. Amen. us. Thank you. Thank you. I love music, so you girls just spoke to my heart. Today, this is a poem I'm going to read to you that I wrote. And the name of the poem is, For the Love Of. Music, a source of energy, soothes the soul, like a bowl of soup soothes the inner soul. Songs of love, like the spirit, touches your inner being, makes you sway back and forth, pat your feet, tap your fingers. The black ballerina, dancer Misty Copeland, takes you on a love journey as she dances in Swan Lake. You could feel the love as Shaku Mason caressed the cello as he played at Megan and Harry's, uh, Harry's funeral uh, wedding. You can look at President Obama and First Lady Michelle, and see the gleam in their eyes and know 
That is love. Reverend Carey, the pastor who spoke so elegantly at Megan's and Harry's wedding, gave so many examples of how love can solve so many problems in the world. Hate is the opposite of love. Haters love to hate. Haters have to put a lot of focus on African Americans for just being black. Hate has created history. World War I, two, the death of Martin Luther King Jr. and the death of many African Americans. The injustice still remains, but love will prevail. The haters did not want the last 250,000 enslaved people in Galveston, Texas to know that they were freed by the emancipation publication because of their love for money and power. The National Museum of African American History and Culture tells many stories of how African Americans contributions have made the United States a great country. God's will did prevail, but injustice still remains. Thank you. My name is Patricia Habersham, and I, I'm so glad to be here today. You all, I'm telling you, the singing is, ooh, I, I got to come back here and have a good time. And I was having a good time. Today, I will be presenting Whispers of Revelation. Distant drumming awakes me, whispers from the unknown origin calling my name, beating inside my soul calling me, pulling me to a place I'd never known. The pause, even now, echoes inside my mind, my spirit in new ways. The whispers entrance me with their sound, ancient as all the yesterdays of the universe. They create an awareness I cannot fully comprehend, an excitement I cannot control, a yearning I dare not ignore. The distance whisper says, go to the place where tomorrow is born, the place where eternity awaits, the undoing of today's dilemmas. Go to the place, they say, where time answers the question of lost and unanswered dreams of undiscovered purpose. Go to the place where footprints seals in the sand of yesterday Unearth revealed a reality, preordained by designers of destiny and fate. The echo of distant drums call my name. They await the day I answer their call. The whispers retreat me to come. Come, they say, come. Discover why you are here. Today I will be sharing a poem titled, The Soul of South Africa. Looking back through this precipice called time, searching as far as the eye and heart can see, embracing Venda's ancestral spirits that surround, then guide me to a new tomorrow. Many before me have stood watch, taught in ways handed down throughout time. Dance and song forever remain our way. This, partnered with the power of Umoja, unity, conquers 
oppression. Forgiveness and reconciliation bridge yesterday with tomorrow. We are each made strong by the journey. Traversing ravines and burgeoning rivers, my soul discovers nature's bounty. Beyond lion and zebra, elephant and giraffe, like the baobab tree, jacaranda and quiver, I too am attached to this soil. From the Atlantic's pounding surf and stunning shoreline, to, Na to Namaqualand's floral kaleidoscope of color, my soul is entranced by this, our native land, where we walk with pride, work with hope, serve with faith, embracing family as foundation. This, first and last, is our nation's impenetrable armor, her mightiest weapon. Still vibrant, the voices of Mandela, Tutu, and yes, de Klerk, echo in chorus, teaching, teaching that honor must be born from within. Just as when sacred drums were silenced by rulers in fear, and the sound of gumboots would connect souls bound in squalor-filled minds. You showed determination and faith-centered humility, presented to the world your greatness, allowed all to celebrate your victory. <coughs> Today, we watch with pride as you protect that which is yours. Such is your way, born of your powerful, resilient spirit, born from the soul of South Africa. Praise the Lord, church. I am so blessed to be here today. I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed so far. But before I do my poem, I just want to share with you that I was uh, blessed to visit South Africa uh, last month. And um, it was such a special trip. But we went to a little village uh, in Johannesburg called Soweto. And this is what God laid on my heart to write. Soweto children, on a cool, rainy, and muddy day in Soweto, Johannesburg, South African children welcomed us, smiling with open arms. To us, their environment was devastating. Yet they showed no sense or sign of desolation, playing games created by them for their own entertainment. They knew nothing about going to the mall, nothing about new clothes, shoes, movies, nothing at all. No running water or inside toilets, only shared outhouses. Homes made of tin with bricks on top to hold the roof down, eating only food grown by them, caused them no frown. Appreciative of the school supplies we gifted them, though we didn't understand their language, they exuded love and gave many hugs. Oh, how I wish our children could see proof of their environment, be grateful for their privileges, and not take for granted the things privileges bring. The gratefulness of those Soweto children touched our hearts. Tears flowed from eyes that had not seen such conditions. I pray 
we will all find some way to let Soweto children know better is coming. Because these are God's children, and he is always loving. Because this is the, the national weekend to observe Dr. King's birthday, we decided our final presentation would be in honor to Dr. King. How is it? How is it that a man of God named King, no less, clearly born to lead his people, could not be saved. His nation was so delayed in their replies to his pleas that he had to die before his dreams could materialize. Who was this man who taught us to defy unjust laws who caused a nation to pause, take up the cause of civil and human rights, dignity for all. Fighting to strike down long-held laws of the land by strikes, sit-ins, taking stands, standing up for the justice, but even behind jail cell bars, how do we honor someone who dreamed a vision that shines through decades, centuries of darkness, showed us that a spiritual sunrise can lift yokes into thin air? To this day, many are still seeking ways to say, thank you forever, Dr. King. We're in your debt. Your gift and sacrifice we'll never forget. We know you'd be the first to say, thank the world with your change, for empty words are best left unsaid. Your legacy lets us know change doesn't come from the mountaintop. It takes you to it. So we offer our best self to your memory, keeping chaos, conflict, and fear clear of our path to victory. So much is still unchained, yet to this day the world praises the name of a southern man of the fall. Who stirred up much, but gave up more in search of a new day for his beloved brothers and sisters. That he was chosen to leave, but whom he had to leave mm -hmm. behind. special tribute. Amen. We are blessed by your words. Touch the heart. And for you to go to South Africa and see what you've seen and bring it back and put it into words. Yes. It really, really touched me. Amen. You know, because um, you gave us a vision of what 
what you've seen and you put it into words and we can almost see it ourselves Amen. just by you doing it. So you all did very wonderful. We really appreciate it. praise with dance with our ROC dancers. Take my people with 
Oh 
this song. Yeah. No more crying. There will be no more crying. I can't hear y'all. No more crying. No, ain't you tired of crying? No crying over me, over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. And come home to my Lord and be free. No more dying. I'm tired of it. Amen. There'll be no more dying. I don't hear y'all. Here we go. No more dying over me, over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Hum it out, y'all. Talking up here, y'all. Come on now. God is good. We're all in synchronicity together, from the songs to the poems to the dance. And now, well, my name is Nana Malaya. Will y'all say Nana? Nana. Nana. Malaya. 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 Nana is a name that sometimes we call our grandmothers. Right. How many of you call your grandmothers Nana or something Nana close Kate. to that? Nana? Nana mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know what? Nana is a universal word for mother, Amen. father, grandmother, grandfather, teacher, minister, elder, and wise one. And I'm all of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have carried five children, raised 10, 15 grands, and I now have four great grandbabies. <laughs> but I'm still only 22. Yeah. <laughs> That's my story I'm sticking to. I'm blessed to have been dancing all of my life. I came dancing my mom on the steps of the hospital wow. and I've been dancing ever since and you know what because we're in church we gotta remember yeah. as we give praise in our voice and our bodies and always and I'm blessed to be told I had the first liturgical dance company in the United States back in the yeah. mid 70s wow. what I have to say as a pioneer oftentimes they wouldn't let me do dances like they just did, or a dance that was based on a Bible verse. I couldn't do it up in the pulpit. They said, well, maybe in the social hall, maybe after church. But it's great how we've grown. Now just about every church has a dance ministry, a poet ministry, my dear friend Joe. My ministries, poetry, puppetry, all kinds of ministries. Film ministries. Mm -hmm. Hey. Because you can praise the Lord in all ways. So, I want to share a story with you. In this story, I usually call it Farmer Brown's Mule. Well, first I want to say that what I have on for our International Day of Freedom, because people have been working for freedom from time immemorial. And unfortunately, people of African descent have had to fight for that freedom. Oftentimes, being colonized by those of European descent, and they had to fight for a long, long periods of time. Interestingly enough, if you check your history, you'll see most of the countries during the 60s had their freedom fighters. And it was the young people under 25 that helped push those movements. Well, even here, 
I was under 25, because I'm only 22 now, right? right. <laughs> and in the 60s, it was the young people that pushed the movements of the civil rights. Yes, we had Dr. King, who was considered a young man at the time. He was only 25. And they kind of thought he might be a little bit too young to be leading the movement. For the other elders that were much older than him. But you know, you never know who they're going to choose. And I will tell you this. I want you to remember this. Look for, somebody take notes. Look for a film called The Vernon Johns Story. It's a film you can find. Who knows if it's on Netflix. You used to be able to uh, get the DVD and, you know, wherever you get those now. <laughs> you know. But the story is real important because the Vernon Johns story is a person whose name we might not know. Because like Rosa Parks, there were plenty of people that sat down. Some of them didn't get a chance to get up. Some of their names we don't know and won't know. However, there were also lots of Harriet Tubmans. And if you go and see the film, which is an excellent film, take all your family to see it. Because we need to remember the travesty of that time frame. And don't be afraid for them to see some cruelty. There's not a lot in this particular film. They handle that actually very well. But when you think, I'm not sure about your children, but some of these things these kids are watching between TV and some of these games that they play, they can certainly see some of the hardships of the enslavement period and understand what it was really about. Understand what the Native Americans, of whose blood I also share, they broke every freaking treaty. So you make sure that whatever treaties they made while we're around in the civil rights movement and beyond, that you make sure not only you, but everybody in your family over 18 is registered to vote. That's your calling today and every day. You talk to those folks who say, even the elders say, <laughs> you know, they say, if you elect a clown, you'll get a circus. Look at what we got. Okay. <laughs> You have to get registered to vote. Amen. Texas kept us enslaved for two extra years. Mm -hmm. You imagine that whole big state, they kept our families from getting in there and finding us. Yeah. Do you know how many people they must have had to murder to keep them from getting through? Mm -hmm. So this is a history we have to share. Right. They gotta know because they don't understand. They don't understand how rough it was and how rough it might get back to being. And by the time we have to talk to our young black men about just going out to the movies, just walking down the street, playing in the playground, now we gotta talk to our young ladies, and actually now, they're killing older folks and older women, unarmed. It's scary. So when we talk about our freedom, we gotta recognize, you know what? What's the phrase? Let me phrase it right. You know, prayer without action. What is it? That's right. So we got to act. We have to act. We got to get our people to act, and we got to get our young people to act. Because mostly everybody here, if you were involved in the civil rights movement, you're still 22 like I am, <laughs> even though you've been working at it for 50 years. But it's the young people that have made all the changes. So we got to get them back involved. And we also got to listen to them. We got to encourage them and listen to them. Encourage them and listen to them. Because if they're talking and we ain't listening, they ain't going to come back. That's right. And they're not going to talk to you anymore. Amen. Even when you don't agree, just listen. And then say, oh, wow, thank you for sharing. And if you have some thoughts, think of first how you can praise yeah. their sharing. Mm -hmm. And then if you have some thoughts that maybe where it might be lacking in ideas, maybe don't share them right away. But <coughs> give the praise first and let that be three quarters of what you do. And if there's something to say, well, you know, what about this? You know, maybe we need to work. And you know, that, that this critical thinking, they're not teaching this in school anymore. I'm a teacher, right. I know. 
but I teach what I want, so. <laughs> I introduced my principal to some friends of mine in an event. I said, oh yeah, this is my boss. She said, you ain't got no boss. <laughs> That's right. But through the arts, I teach the history. So, I've got from young kids to older kids, and I have them grabbing by the elbows, and they get in the line, and I have them marching through the school. Ain't gonna let nobody turn us around, turn us around. I have them marching through the school. They say, oh, not a Malay is in our school today. <laughs> they say, what you experience, you remember 90%. Yeah. What you hear, only 10%. What you see, about 20%. We gotta expose our children. Bring them. You know you didn't want to go when you were younger either. Bring them. Make them come. Sit there and look all mean and... I was a good kid, but every once in a while I was like that too. Because you never know what they're gonna need. Spike Lee said his parents drug him everywhere. And all that was beneficial. Thurgood Marshall got punished because he was always asking questions. A little bit too inquisitive for the time. Guess what he had to write as his, quote, punishment? Parts of the Constitution, hello! <laughs> Thurgood Marshall knows the Constitution backwards and forwards. Have your children do creative writing about their thoughts. Whether they spell it right or not, have them write it out. And then encourage them later and give them the dictionary and show them how to spell. I've got college students that don't know the difference between K-N-O-W and N-O. And no matter how great the poem might be, they need to know the proper way. We got creative spelling. I just saw a girl's name, E-B-N-E-E. -E -E. I said, what's your name? She said, Ebony. That's, it. That's a skill. You can't understand your children. My parents couldn't understand me, and I can't understand mine. That's a skill. That's brilliance. So recognize. But I want to say that what I have on is a traditional Cameroonian outfit from the Cameroon. I've been blessed to be a queen mother because I've also found that I have family in the Cameroon. My name is Mama Manto Etunde. And it's by Mimli K people in the Cameroon. And this is a traditional outfit that only the queen mothers can wear. <laughs> and the crown. And the fly was is used in a lot of cultures as a sign of wisdom and royalty. So recognize that we're all royal. We've heard it. If you get a chance to do your DNA, I am advertising, AfricanAncestry.com is a good one, because y'all already know y'all got African ancestry, you know? Amen. Even for some of us still don't want to admit it. You know, you look at us, it's like, well, where else could our families be from? Right. You know, Asians don't deny that they're Chinese or Japanese or Korean. Right. Even if they've been here forever. I lived in Japan, talked to a Japanese friend of mine. She ain't never been to Japan. I can speak Japanese, she can't. But she knows where her family's from. So we got to recognize we're African. It doesn't matter whether we were born in Africa. Africa was born in us. That's it. And when we learn who we are, we'll recognize that we're going to be proud of that because we are more than, quote, unquote, ex-slaves. So Farmer Brown had a mule. And Farmer Brown had this mule. And that mule was, well, what do you know about mules? Stubborn. See, that's the first thing she said. They're stubborn. Mm-hmm. Mama, don't you go nowhere. I know her children. What about me? What else do you know about you? They ugly. Ooh, she doesn't think they're very cute. They may not be the finest kind of horse four-legged animal on the planet. Let's see. What else? I'm going over here. Mm-hmm. What else do you know about? Mule. They're short. She said they're short. That's true. You know, I'm a real tall person. I have a hard time riding on a mule. But you know what most people don't know? They're strong. And they're loyal. Mm -hmm. When they talk about beasts of burden, they can do some work. So Farmer Brown had that mule. And he had him work that farm and work that farm and work that farm and work that farm from can't see in the morning till when can't see at night. 
And you know what? At first, Farmer Brown's farm wasn't very big. It was probably only as big as this area right here in front. But the sun was good. The rain was good. And the crops were good. And after a while, that farm was bigger than this whole room. But he still kept that mule in a little tiny, dingy, broken down shack. The rain came in. If it snowed, it came in. Everything came in. Of course, there was no air conditioning in there, of course. But that mule stayed. And he worked that farm and worked that farm and worked that farm and worked that farm. From when? Can't see in the morning. To when? Can't see at night. That's right. Y'all got to participate now. <laughs> Remember. What you do, you retain 90%. So, Farmer Brown's mule was very important to him. Mm, the sun was good, the rain was good, and the crops were good. Shoot, after a while, that farm was bigger than the whole church and the whole block. He didn't need that mule no more. Mm -hmm. He had seen himself by this time. They had created tractors. He found a bright, shiny new tractor with wheels. <coughs> wow. They were taller than I am. So one morning, Farmer Brown went out. And he went to the way far end of his farm. And he started digging a hole. A ditch. What's a ditch? A big hole. So big, you can't jump over it. So high, you can't jump out of it. So he took a plank of wood and put it at one end. And he took that mule and he let him down in the ditch. Well, he pulled the plank out and he started... Taking the dirt, throw it in the hole. Taking the dirt, throw it in the hole. Taking the dirt, throw it in the hole. I know you don't want to help him, but I need your help. What did he do? Take that dirt. Louder. What did he do? Rhythm. Take that dirt. Drum beat. Uh huh. What did they do now? He took that dirt. And you know what? The mule was in the hole. That's right. Have you ever looked around and said, what's happening? When you knew what was happening. So the mule is in there and of course, the dirt's getting probably about as high as the mule's knees. But the mule was one of God's creatures. Don't let you believe that they dumb animals because right. there's no animal that God created that's dumb. Yeah. And the mule came up with a plan. He started stomping on the dirt. Yeah. What did he do? He started stomping on the dirt. What did he do? He started stomping on the dirt. Remember, he had four hoops. He started stomping on the dirt. Farmer Brown is still taking that dirt, throwing it in a hole. What? Taking the dirt, throwing it in a hole. Taking the dirt, throwing it in a hole. What's he doing? Taking the dirt, throwing it in a hole. Taking the dirt, throwing it in a hole. Taking the dirt, throwing it in a hole. The mule's still in there. Sometimes you have to have an adaption to your plan. And you know, sometimes when you get a creative idea, and sometimes you got to make a little addendum or an adaption or Another vision comes to you and say, oh, I know what. So, the mule started. You know, he got to take Shake, 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 shake it all. 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 Farmer Brown still taking the dirt, throwing it in a hole, taking the dirt, throwing it in a hole, taking the dirt, throwing it in a hole. Well... The mule's plan is working, but the dirt's still going in the hole, and it's still getting higher. Adaption. Number two. So, he shook it off, stepped to the side, 
packed it up to the ground. Shook it off, stepped to the side, packed it up to the ground. What he do? Shook it off, stepped to the side, packed it to the ground. What he do? Shook it off, stepped to the side, packed it to the ground. People thought the mule was partying. Step to the side, packed it to the ground. Packed it to the ground. You know, sometimes when we party, we also try to save our own lives. You know? We try to dance that stress off and hopefully not be drinking too much alcohol. And, you know, uh, 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 uh. so far, I'm around. It's still taking the dirt, throwing the hole, taking the dirt, throwing the hole, taking the dirt, throwing the hole. But Farmer Brown ain't paying no attention to the mule because he's just trying to get this dirty work over with. So he actually reaches up. He had brought some lemonade out there. Didn't have a stand like this, but we'll pretend. Oh. He even poured it over his head. Oh, it was hot. It was a lot of work. Y'all know, y'all been working gardens and other kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? He looked up and the mule was almost as high as he was. <laughs> that adaption had worked. Shake it off. Step to the side. What'd he do? Shake it off. Step to the side. Back it to the ground. Shake it off. Step to the side. One more time. Back it to the ground. Don't forget. Shake it off. Step to the side. Back it to the ground. So you see? The mule is now as high as Farmer Brown. Now we know what kind of look he gave Farmer Brown. If looks could kill. It's called a wokpa. He would have been gone. However, the mule decided to be assertive. Assertive means you're direct without harm. And he said, I'm alive. She said, I'm alive. I can go on. And a couple of times, the farmer had tried to sell the mule take it all the way down to like West Virginia or something and give it away and after a while that mule kept coming back showing that loyalty after a while nobody would take that mule anymore so that's when he finds his time he's going to have to dig a hole and put him in well this time the mule left he did not come back but I tell you that story because I'm sure somebody has thrown some dirt on you at some point in time and maybe because it's where you live or where you don't live. Okay. What you don't know, sometimes it's what you do know. Yeah. How you wear your hair or how you don't wear your hair. Yeah. So whatever it is, sometimes people just want to throw dirt because they just decide you the one and the dirt's there and they throw in it. But we each have an opportunity to remember that especially because of the color of our skin, people always want to throw dirt on us. And you got to remember that y'all are kings and queens. Study about the kings and queens of the continent. When folks, even in the United States, were trying to travel and claim this land and go over to the wild, wild west, you know, you ever watch those westerns? All they yeah. do is kill and drink yeah. and, and cavort. <laughs> We have kingdoms and queendoms of kings and queens. Talk to some of your friends from the continent here. Go to them to some of their weddings and see how brilliantly and royally they dress. If you go to the continent and someone shared, I don't care what they have and what they don't have. Nobody's walking around. Sometimes I feel like They walking. And you see them women? I've seen them with couches on the top of their head. Yeah, yeah. No hands. <laughs> so when you women go into the market and you feel like you got a whole bunch of bags, you got it, honestly. And the men, oh, I don't see the men carrying nothing, even over there, so, you know. It's okay. It's okay. Because the power of men and women is understood in the continent. It's understood that everybody's important. You ain't going to have a family without a man and a woman. 
right. And I don't care what people cr try and create nowadays. Right. Put them all on an island. There won't be no more. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. It don't work that way. And I'm not saying mistreat people because of that. But folks have to understand. I've had conversations with some of my friends. I was like, let's think about this. You know, we as friends over here too. Girls, we used to hop down and hopscotch and hold right. hands and That's stuff right. like that. That's you right. know, All that was good. But yeah. now it's going on. Right, exactly. Now you gotta watch. Because they're trying to get some of these young folks to understand different little young That's kids right. on the playground going up to their friends sitting on their lap. That's my wifey. Oh, wait a minute. Get up. Right. <laughs> Go play hopscotch. Right <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Keep those childhood things. Because we know it don't last that long. That's right. Once you're 18, you're grown. And you don't get to go back. <laughs> you might want to, but you don't get to go back. So they say, raise them up in the way you want them to be. And have them understand. Mansa Musa was a king that was so rich on the continent of Africa, he went across the continent and he spoiled everybody's economy. Everybody's. Read up on them. Mansa Musa. I think the richest woman on the continent of Africa is a Nigerian woman. There's a lot of wealth in Nigeria. Of course, there's a lot of confusion. Colonization is by design. Our children are miseducated by design. Amen. There's a book called The Miseducation of, of the, the Negro. Negro. Revisit yes, it. Yes, indeed. Put your kids and your grandkids on your lap and tell them some stories and let them know, no, we don't do that. Right. We don't act like that. I don't care what, you know, they, don't, they ain't in this family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not how we do things. And you give them that foundation. They say all things vibrate back to their natural form. If anyone has raised teenagers, you know they all go crazy. At least most of them. I had a couple of same ones. But even the ones that went crazy, they come back. When you give them something, you know? Drag them to church. Sit down. You know what I'm saying? And if they choose another faith, just make sure you go with them. I consider myself an equal opportunity worshiper. I go with my friends who are Buddhists. I go to their ceremonies. I go with friends who are Muslim. I go to their church. Because I find that the common denominator is the creative energy that everybody believes in the divine spirit. They got a different name for it. They may have a little similar, different philosophy. But the bottom line, it's about personal development and you becoming connected to the divine the light. So there don't have to be that many conflicts and differences between us. All that conflict they got going on in different countries and between us is also by design. Because mm -hmm. they keep the conflict going and guess what they're going in. You know all the riches are on the continent of Africa? Oh, yeah. All the diamonds. These smartphones we have, the only place to get it is Coltan in the Congo. Only place. But if you didn't know, a black woman created GPS, Dr. Gladys West. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Henry Sampson created the smartphone. Everything. We were astronomers. And we still are. We have to study who we were. So people understand, you got this math thing. We created it. What you talking about? It's the truth. But if they don't understand that, then if it, I just can't get this. And they keep changing stuff because they've been changing stuff since I oh, elementary school. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be honest. Yeah. I'm like, even if someone asks me to sub, I'm not doing a math class. <laughs> I'll take him a Mankala board if you don't know what that oh, yeah. is. Look up Mankala. <laughs> Mankala is a math game. Yes, All yes. children from the smallest, if they can count from one, two, three, four, five, to the eldest, love to play Mankala. It's a math game that has your mind thinking in terms of numbers and things like that. So there's all kinds of ways to expose them. And it's also an aspect of African culture that they can embrace. My name is Nana Malaya, Nana Ainu, one who speaks in parables, the dancing diplomat. I am the daughter of Mary Wilhelmina Brown from New York City and Ebenezer Ray from Ghana. 
as well as Barbados, West Indies. And you know, you got to know who you are in here because that will get you through everything. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. Keep singing. I'm going to let it shine. Why do you think they didn't teach you? Keep this singing. About the African kings and queens. I'm going to let it shine. If you remember in the 80s, there was this big ad campaign. African kings and queens. Budweiser. Right. Had the pictures. The history. And what were we doing? We were... We were gaining all kinds of ground, economically, socially. They put two things in our community, crack. And they told us we could not pray in school. But the other thing they did, they took the discipline away from school. No internal discipline, no external discipline. If you hear a teacher has been fired for corporal punishment, don't assume they've hit a child. Please don't. You can lose your job if you tell a child to write, you were talking too much, write a hundred times, I will not talk in class. Fired offense. No warning. Done. We're not talking about putting your hands on anybody. The smallest things, all the stuff that our teacher used to tell us to write. Yep. I'm a talker, so you know I had to write that a lot. I, 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 they're older than me now. But the bottom line is, when they find something they like, they will read and read and read. You won't have to ask them to read. It can be about horses. It can be about stars. I used to know the constellations like crazy when I was about eight years old. I could stand outside and tell you what was North, East, and before, not just the North Star. So encourage them to read. Find out what they're interested in. And if they haven't shown the interest, give them a bunch of things to start developing the interest. Sometimes you got to help some of them. Read this. Do this. You know what I'm saying? You know, we are here first. You know? I tell my children I love you. And you might have been my great-grandmother the last time. But I'm here first this time. So first you got to listen to me. Then I'll listen to you. I do listen to them. And they're and wise. I mean, come on. We say, we see certain little children running around and say, oh, they must have been here a hundred times before. Mm -hmm. We see a brilliance in them. So mm -hmm. let's give a positive recognition for it to come out. Right. How can it be exercised? It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Mm -hmm. Who are we to be so wonderful, so marvelous, so fabulous? We. Are a child of God. You are a child of God. And when you let your light shine, you give other people permission to do the same. Mm -hmm. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, this little light of mine. Y'all keep singing. That particular speech is an abbreviated form. It was Nelson Mandela's speech when he came out of prison. His inauguration speech was that. Look it up. It was also written by a woman. I've been using that as a way to lead worship services for years. And someone came to me and said, Did you know that was written by a woman? He didn't write that. I was like, really? I was a little miffed at first. I was like, then I was told it was a white woman. I was a little almost pissed off. I'm like, what? But I've also gotten to know the woman that wrote it. And if you don't know who she is, her name is Marianne Williamson. She's been running for president right now. Really? Take a listen to her speaking very profound woman spiritually, 
but she's astute politically. So if you hear him say, yeah, that's Oprah's like guru or something, uh-uh. You know better than listening to what they say. They call all of us stupid too, right? Some of you work in corporate America. If you show any sign of intelligence, just like, oh my, you're so intelligent. Like it's a rarity. No. Right, right. We were the first to write, the first to read. Humanity began with our black seed. For 10, 20,000 years alone, we were here before others were born. So sharpen your eyes and tune your ears so you know what you see, understand what you hear, because minute by minute, hour by hour, if you lose your history, you lose your power. Minute by minute, hour by hour, if you lose your history, you lose your power. Once more, minute by minute, hour by hour, if you lose your history, you lose your power. Pythagoras, Galileo, Aristotle too, they got credit from what they learned from you. That's right. So sharpen your eyes and tune your ears so you know what you see, understand what you hear. I've been a drama student. They used to tell me, yeah, the Greeks started drama. I'm like, people were here before them. That's right. How did it start there? Yes. <laughs> and at that time, of course, I was starting to get a little Africanized and aware. And studied with a guy by the name of Dr. Leonard Jeffries, whose birthday happens to be today. Oh. Dr. Yusef ben Johanna. Yes. These are really great scholars talking about the African origins of the major Western religions, how certain theories and practices, there are some communities where you always had to have 12 as the leader, like the 12 disciples. They had councils where they handled stuff. It wasn't chaos. When our ancestors were brought here, it's because we were artisans. We knew how to farm. It wasn't just for manual labor. So we got to go further, because you know, if you don't tell your story, it ain't going to get told right. Mm -hmm. So take some time and find out. I also am a visual artist, and I found out that Picasso and Modigliani, two very well-known European painters, went to the continent and stole their techniques. Mm from the African art and mask that they saw. They call Picasso's Cubism. And if you research, they'll actually tell you that they stole it, <laughs> you know? And I was in high school when I was reading up on it, and I wrote one of my high school you know, essays on the fact that they stole it. My teacher said, really? I said, yeah. You know, by that time, you know, you had encyclopedias. Yes, it's an encyclopedia, and I use more than one reference. I use five. You know, more than just one, the internet. Right. So it's important. There's so much of who we are that we have to see our value because you deserve it. Amen. You deserve it. You deserve it. Who you are. Come on, everybody. What you are. Worship the Lord. Everything that you've seen. He's worthy of the All the things that you've been you before you've been to here. Today. The great ancestors that came before you were intelligent artisans. The women were also beautiful and warriors. Some of them were excellent statesmen and helped to bridge gaps between groups and countries. So learn more because you deserve it. You deserve it. You know you do.
y'all got to come on, say, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. From the bottom of your heart, lift your voice. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. something called post-traumatic slavery syndrome. Oh, okay. <laughs> a sister finally said, all this trauma that's been going on, all these horrific things, you ever been treated for any of them? Mm. <laughs> any of y'all? Mm -mm. <laughs> and it's no small matter. And I mentioned things that are harmful, tarred and feathered, alive, Y'all smell tar when you see some road being worked on or some roof. Can you imagine pouring that hot tar over someone's body that looks like you? And then th throwing some feathers on them. It's a horrible thing to think of, but they say what you resist persists. And for many years we have spoken and chosen not to speak of these things, understandably. We wanted our children to kind of move through. And this, okay, let's just keep going. But we can see that there's repercussions for them not understanding. So now it's time to share some of these stories. But guess what? Look at all the beautiful stories. Do you know all the Cleopatras are African women? And there's like at least six of them. And come on now, can you remember uh, Elizabeth Taylor playing Cleopatra? Can you imagine if it was like Nina Simone or, uh, you know, <laughs> India Ire <laughs> playing Keely Patrick because it was a black woman mm -hmm. turning that place upside down. A Nubian queen from Nubia. So we just have to revisit some of the misinformation and reclaim our natural royalty. And if you don't have the details, you can feel it in your bones. I talk about the um, music. Because that's what we're here celebrating through music, dance. It's a way of praise and poetry. And look at what's changed in the 80s. The content of the music our young people listen to. Oh, sure. We're a winner. We're moving on up. I'm black and I'm proud. What they listen to now? Some people can't even understand. They call it mumble rap. Well, I don't know what they're saying. But I also know that I, even when I talk to elementary school kids, I say, what's some of the songs you listen to? I have a day that I share with them at least once a month. They can't play anything for me they can't find a clean version of. My kids ain't listening to that. Because <laughs> what are they saying? What's it feeding their minds and their spirits? You know? So we got to give them some other things to listen to, some other content. Coming to these programs and hearing songs and dance and poetry and praise so they can understand. And it changed when somebody else's money went into it, because at first you had all the positive rappers and the positive hip hop groups and the positive songs they were singing. And then they said, well, if you do this, we'll give you more money. If you do this, we'll give you more money. And there's lots of documentation to that. And most of us have lived it long enough to see. So let's help our children and ourselves evolve into 
the royalty mm. that we really are. Amen. Asante son, tuta honey, bakira hare. I love and appreciate you, and thank you for inviting me to be here with you all today. of you that watch Greenleaf, keep an eye for the next season coming up. <laughs> keep my son in prayer. He does a lot of other things. He does have a, a movie about um, Meharry Medical College called um, Waiting to Serve, I think is the name of it. And there's a lot of other things that are positive that he continues to do. Because I taught my kids what we stand for and what we don't stand for. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed to have a niece that's on the show John Lewis, who I've had the blessings to perform for, um, he actually came to a show that Joy and I did downtown at the library a few years ago. Um, John Lewis said everybody should get into Good Trouble. There's a TV show called Good Trouble. It comes on Hulu and Freeform. I know some of you are frowning your face when my niece told me. I said, what? Hulu and Freeform. Look for the show called Good Trouble. I'm blessed to say that my niece, coming out of Spellman with magna cum laude. Woo, go girl. She decided to go to England and study drama for a year. She went and taught in South Africa for a summer. She spent time at the Cannes Film Festival and she's actually doing a show where she plays a character called Malaika. Sounds like Malaika. Malaika in Good Trouble. She plays a Black Lives Matter activist where the writing it's written, so it's one of respect for the work we're doing and not making us look like, you know, you know how they can. When somebody's doing something righteous and they make it look wrong. So check her out too and, you know, all the positive things. If you do any social media, I am on Facebook. Feel free to inbox me. If you inbox me um, or you friend request, then make a little note. You know, hey, I was at church. You know, so, because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people out there trying to hack into people's things that are doing positive things, so, you know. But um, I really can't say how much um, this is a ministry for me. Um, God has put in my heart to make sure we know who we are in all avenues, all places, you know. And uh, if I have to go on the street corner and sing so people know, this little light of mine, you are, it's your light. Our kids went to a school I taught that called Tree of Life. They know. <laughs> and I've run into those kids later on, and they understand. I've had some kids that were, you know, sometimes the most difficult ones. I had one come up to me. She gave me this big hug, only picked me off the street. And I was like, what? How you doing? And she told me what she was doing, how she was doing, and how what I said to her helped her, you know, shift what she was doing in her life. She had some stumbles, and then she realized, oh, Yep, if I do that, that'll get me that. If I want something different, I gotta do something different. You know, don't be afraid to change. <coughs> change the tradition of your family, you know? It's really bolder to do something different than to do the same thing. So, may God keep us all safe and wonderful. May we shine in his light and may everything you do benefit the next seven generations to come.
So we want to do a few presentations and then we'll have remarks from Pastor, so we're not going to hold you much longer. So our first presentation is for Tatiana. And We appreciate all that you're doing. We thank God for how he's using this ministry to Lebanese. We thank God how he's using joy on even a larger platform. of how the Lord blessed me to meet Nana Malaya. Y'all believe it was a yoga class? Tell me God is not everywhere. Amen. Told her to go to yoga class. He did. And I was obedient. challenged by our leadership to do is those of us who have found success that we find a way to bless other ministries internal to us. So this is AIM's opportunity to inreach to ministries that always support us on the inside of this body. We would like to dedicate this um, Sister Shelley back for the education department. today and uh, we couldn't end this without hearing from our awesome leader Amen. who allowed this day so we're going to present to others present to some and introduce to others our one and only Dr. David Fields Jr. <laughs> Congratulate 
Thank you for your labor and your service. You have done did a wonderful job. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we thank you. We thank you, Sister Donna, for Amen. inviting all these beautiful guests. Yeah. I can understand when she was talking about the mule. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> throwing dirt on him. He was packing it so he can get away. That's right. <laughs> and he finally got away. That's right. But he is a hard working animal. Yeah. Amen. Now you should fly the mule. Yeah, now you should race the mule. You should do it back in the 50s. Amen. And certainly. It's good to sit down and tell some of the young people today some stories that we have come from. Right. And I really believe the hardest thing is to get them to sit down. Mm -hmm. You can get it over to them if you can get them to sit down and tell of the things that you experienced back in the 50s. In the 40s, and then life was different. Yes, that's right. You can fly a mule all day for 75 cents. Ooh. Yes, things were cheap then. You could go to the movie, buy a piece of cheese, a soda pop for 25 cents. Yes, for $10, 10 cents a gallon. Mm -hmm. 